creativity is just your ability as a human to come up with ideas and then put them into action. You have this ability to make phenomenal pictures and to show people how amazing they are as people. That is the gift and it's pretty special. For a lot of us, we just aim too low with those intentions. We say, I want to travel or I want to make X amount of money. And those things are usually pretty attainable to some point. And once we get there, what happens next? One of the most liberating things as an artist is to remind yourself that you don't have to please everybody. Once you give yourself permission to not have to please everybody, then you can start creating without fear. With basically anything, there's the art of it, and then there's the business side of it, the logistics of it, the structure of it. Your excitement is like a compass. It points you in a certain direction, and when you walk or run in that direction, life seems to just align itself. Hello, creatives. Welcome back to the Art Creative Podcast. If this is your first time here, then this podcast is all about digging into the minds of creatives, understanding their stories, digging into their creativity, learning more about what motivates and inspires them to create so that we can take action to create ourselves. We hope to inspire you to become better creatives, artists, and entrepreneurs by learning from the best in the arts and business. I am your host, Sachin Kona, a wedding and portrait photographer based out in Vancouver, Canada, and I thank you so much for tuning in and joining us. In this episode, I connect with Jacob Lofman, a creative wedding photographer based out of St. Louis in the US and a former keynote speaker at last year's ARC Photography Conference, The Experience. Jacob is here to discuss his exciting new Instagram project, what it means for him to be able to do personal work and how he goes from inaction to action right away. I really enjoyed this conversation and we discuss why pushing yourself is so important in photography along with the importance of making time to let yourself play how Jacob's tattoo has become the best part of his morning routine, the juxtaposition between photography styles and personalities, why Jacob thinks you should be always kind to others and yourself, and so much more. Listen in as we reminisce over last year's photography conference and after party stories, which speaker Jacob is looking forward to seeing most of the experience in 2018 and why you shouldn't care what other photographers think of your work and how St. Louis public parks are inspiring Jacob's latest photos. I absolutely love chatting with Jacob. Wherever you are, I really hope you enjoy this conversation with Jacob Loafman. This episode is sponsored by The Experience. The Experience is a three-day photography conference happening this October 2018 from the 23rd to the 25th in Vancouver, BC. Ten creatives will join us from all over the world and we have a bonus fourth day of masterclasses on October 22nd in which these ten keynote speakers will be teaching you hands-on in intimate settings so that you can expand your photography business and career. The experience is for all photographers and creatives from wedding, portrait, commercial, fashion, and fine art communities. The theme this year is the art and business of photography. And if you want to raise the bar for yourself, learn from the very best, be a part of a growing supportive community and take part in our adventure day, live karaoke evening and party your socks off, then we want to see you there. Listeners to the show can save $100 on the ticket price using the code PODCAST at checkout. That's PODCAST at checkout. Just head to www.experience.thisisarc.co for more information. What's new, man? What's good? What's been going on? You just did a shoot? I just had like a this guy I know here in St. Louis for a company in the photography industry, but they deal with like commercial photography and retouching and stuff. It's called RGG EDU. They create like educational tutorials and stuff. But one of their videographers here, he's doing a side series on local artists. So he's doing like a mini documentary on me. So yeah, he shot me doing a Lofi shoot today. I shot the tennis series. Oh, wow. For my public park sports book that I'm working on. And um, yeah, it was, it was amazing, man. So much fun. Sweet, dude. Tell us more about this uh, personal project. You know, I, th- I think like a, a lot of photographers that, that set aside time to do personal projects or try something new, um, we start to do these things and it could be something as simple as landscapes, right? And you want to create a photo book out of it because, you know, I have a following and people are interested in, in my work and buying prints and stuff. But I've been trying to think of like, well, if I do put a book out, I don't want to just put a book out. You know, I want it to be something that is really meaningful to me. It's going to be geared towards my Lofi stuff. So I shot a series last year called Racquetball in one of our in one of our public parks here in St. Louis. And um, it was just beautiful light. And I just edited it in a very different way where it's very low contrast, low luminance on colors. But it's just this interesting look where the colors pop kind of in a different way. I'm influenced a lot by Maria Sparbova. 
who does a similar type of work. So I, she was definitely my influence for this. So all this to say, after I did that, that series kind of took off. People seemed to enjoy it. So I said, well, I'm going to do a whole series. And at first it was just on sports. So my friend Sammy, who's the model, she's always up for modeling, thankfully. And we go out and have fun. And then I said, well, I can make a book out of this and I can just call it, you know, I wanted to focus on the sports that are available to the public in public parks. So it's yep. free, right? So I'm just going to create a different character and focus on every sport that's offered in the public parks here in St. Louis. And um, just create an interesting photo series where it's not even about like being active with the sports. It's, it's interesting poses and unusual poses, very still, but very colorful and just very interesting. The way I describe the edits is it, it reminds me of like those old hand-drawn brochures you would get from like a state park or a travel agency where it's just very, it almost looks fake, but it's not. Yeah. Like old, old car ads. And yeah, so that's kind of what I'm going for, just to push myself in a different direction to see where it takes me. So yeah, it's that's been awesome, fun man. so far. And why is pushing yourself important to you? When I started, when I went full time with this, I told myself, you know, you can always go back to a day job if something doesn't work out or something. And um, honestly, if I, if I just wanted to shoot weddings and portraits, Sash, it, it, it would honestly just turn into another job for me and I would get I would get burnt out on it and I would find something else to do. So I told myself when I jumped full time that like you, you need to push yourself so you never even approach the burnt out stage. Try everything, use different light, shoot different things, shoot everything you can. So I push myself to keep myself on that path because if I just want a job, I'll happily go work for somebody else and let them pay taxes and take care of accounting and pay for my health insurance and <laughs> I'll happily do that. But I get so, yeah, I get so much more out of this where like today that was part of my job and I had a video made about me doing my job and we were, I was on a tennis court and throwing tennis balls to the side of a model and standing on a footstool. And like, this is amazing. That was my job <laughs> today, you know? Yeah, like, that's, so, <laughs> that, that's so cool, man. I know. And the question, I mean, I, you know, I know how important creativity is to you. I just wanted to to hear that answer and, it, and just to really know what it means uh, for you to do personal work and, and for others in general. It's something that I used to do a lot more of, but I haven't made space to do it as much recently. And, and, I, and I definitely know that's something that is lacking and, and made a few calls recently to a few models to just, yeah, just play and have some fun and see where it goes. And yeah, um, and it's super inspiring, man, looking at your Lofi account. And uh, for anyone who isn't familiar, uh, could you tell them what the account is and... Um, and where to find it, actually? Yeah, so the Lofi account is on um, Instagram, and it's Instagram.com. The my my user handle or whatever you want to call it is um, underscore underscore Lofi. So L O A F is in Frank Y underscore underscore. Um, if you just type in Lofi on Instagram, it'll probably be the first one that pops up because it's such an awkward name. Um, but yeah, I, I, I started this account because I wanted to have something separate. Like while I share everything on my main account, I don't mind. Mm -hmm. This was a completely different set. It's where I'm kind of creating my own universe with characters and stuff. So this is all about that. It's all about lines, light, minimalism, um, and just, yeah, very robotic characters where they almost, I almost want them to look like mannequins, but it's real people. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, one of my favorite ones from that series is actually the ones of you, man. Um, there's some <laughs> really great ones with you in front of what I think was a computer and, and then you had your head in it and then it was all blurry. And then another one where there was a shopping cart. I'm just going to the account now. There's one where you're, I love it so much. It's you on the stairs and you're kind of facing head down till it's slightly in, in the corner. Oh, uh, in the corner. Learning German. Apartment lobby, I think is what yeah. you titled it. and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could you t walk us through why? Uh, yeah, a bit about that and how you chose yourself to be the subject of these awesome self portraits. So it's actually a pretty rational answer for like why I choose myself at times for these projects, and it's because I'm always around, right? Like I, <laughs> if, if, if if I have an idea, I can just go find a costume or an outfit and get in front of the camera and make it. So that's why, like, yes, I'm very comfortable in front of the camera. That's why I, I always do these, because if I have an idea, a lot of times I want to do it right away. I'm not the type that writes something down for future plans or something. I need to go that's, next two days at the latest, you know? That's great. Okay. I'm just going to interrupt you there because I definitely am not that sort of person. I'm, I'm the sort of person who will write it down, add it to my list, manage the list, 
managed to walk the list. <laughs> And then at some point I'll get to it. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> how can I how can I and hopefully others can relate to that, but go from a place where we're just taking action right away because I love that so much. It's just and also not having the excuse of not having anyone else around. Right. What we can be the subject. So how do you go from inaction to action? Yeah. So it's um part of the thing, like you said earlier, where you just you you know it's important that you need to make time for yourself to play. The whole process is playing for me, right? So when I when I go out the door or I get this idea, like, you know, like after I shot the racquetball series, I had this sports idea, right? So then if I wanted to shoot something, I would go to the thrift store, find an outfit, find a couple of props at thrift stores, or I'll go to a sporting store and buy a tennis racket and racquetballs or something, throw it all together. And if I'm the only one that's there, then I'll step in and be the subject. So it sounds like a simple answer, but it's because it is. You just go do. You just, you don't. We, we always get these little thoughts that kind of hold us back from why we should do this, right? Like our brains are designed to keep us comfortable. So if it's something we're not used to doing, our brain is going to tell us like, oh, no, you usually don't do this. But the truth is you have a few seconds to say like, okay, yeah, I'm going to do this. And then your brain is only on that path of, okay, we're doing this. So then you go gather the things and yeah, you can just create your own little world. It's a, it's a really pleasant escape for me. Because it's a, it's a healthy escape, right? Like I'm not even escaping reality in that way. I'm escaping into a different creative world for me outside of what I normally create, if that makes sense. Yes, totally. Yeah, so, so really just the process of doing it, it's, it's all about playing. So you just kind of have to imagine yourself as like when you were a child and the street lights don't come on for another two hours and you want to go play another, you want to go shoot some more hoops again before you go to bed. You just go out and do it. You ask your parents and then you go. That's the same, same process with this, except I don't have to ask my parents. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. I'm going to take that on board. One of my goals and one of my uh, hopes is that I can be a lot more playful. That's definitely been something that's the last few few months, something that I've been working on. And yeah, I, I really appreciate you sharing that with us. Um, yeah. so, so thank you for that. Absolutely. But yeah, dude, there's so many things that I would love to ask you and, and to talk about. But uh, one thing that I noticed um, just a few days ago was your tattoo. One thing that I've always loved about your tattoo, which is on your right arm, is that it's just such a powerful reminder. So for the audience that don't know, could you tell the audience what your tattoo was and over the last few days, what the changes that you made to that tattoo and uh, where it is now? Yeah, absolutely. So I went through a couple of years ago, I went through my first breakup and, um, you know, that whole story aside, it was my first real breakup. So it was hitting me really hard. Like I was in bed for three months and people just kept telling me to be kind to yourself. Don't beat yourself up because I'm totally that type of human where I blame myself first. I say that I'm not worthy of things, blah, 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 that whole spiel. So this first tattoo I got during this three month downtime that I was going through this tough time, I got be kind on my forearm, just simple typewriter text on my right forearm. I had always wanted a tattoo, right? Like your, your classic story, but it has to mean something. I'm definitely one of those types with tattoos. And this was not just a reminder to be kind to others. It's also something I wake up every morning and look down at my arm and it's permanently there. And it's a reminder for myself to be kind to myself as well. It's kind of like a, it's, it's wild, but it's kind of like a morning routine for me now, you know? We, we all wake up and sometimes we're like, you know, we're not feeling the best. And I, I just love that I can look down at my arm and just remind myself, like, you know, be kind. It's going to be OK. So, yeah, I <laughs> the second tattoo I just added a few days ago, I went and ate at a Thai restaurant that I wanted to try for a couple of years now. And I'm walking out to my car and I look down and there's a tattoo shop at the end of the plaza. And um I've always wanted to add to this be kind after I got it. So I want to have like just a bunch of sayings that wrap around my forearm area on my right arm. So I added be human above be kind. So yeah, I, I love be human because that kind of, for me, it coincides directly with the be kind saying, because that's what we're best at is just being human, right? And be human, you can have like, I, I love that people ask about it now because they they can take their own meanings away from it, what that means to them. To me, it just means simply be a human just a along with everyone else. Treat them like you want to be treated. Yeah, be a human being. Have some compassion, have some empathy, and just do your best to be the best version of yourself toward other people and for yourself. So, yeah, kind of a long-winded story. But, yeah, I just oh, walked no, down to the shop and I was like, 
I was like, Hey, I saw you accept walk-ins. And he was like, yeah, what would you like? I was like, just be human. It's like, <laughs> sit down. I was in and out in 20 minutes. And I was like, well, that's, wow. that's amazing. <laughs> wow. I love that spontaneity and uh, love the message as well. So thanks for sharing that with us. Yeah, no problem. What I wanted to talk to you about was the experience. You were one of our keynote speakers last year. You did an amazing job. You closed out the three-day event. And and then you closed out again in style at the closing party. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah, so, yes, I so did. Just want to talk uh, a bit about that. How, how was the experience for you from a, from a teacher's perspective? And uh, what were some of your takeaways? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest takeaway was um, just just walking in that first day. I had already known quite a few people because, you know, a, as you know, you get to know each other on editing video chats we have online or through Facebook groups or whatever it may be. But that said, I knew maybe 20 out of 100 and something people. It was like you got a big warm hug from everyone. There was no there was no clicky stuff going on. There was nothing like that. It was just a genuine People are so excited and happy to be here and to be among each other and learn. And there was also, there was not that gap of we're attendees and these are the teachers. There was no, you know, battle of inferiority or superiority because it's completely non-existent. Like it, like we're all humans. That's how I look at it. Yes, I was asked to be a teacher, but like I'm also walk up to me like you want to grab a coffee? Let's go. That's the type of person I am. So it just yeah, just walking in and receiving that amount of love from people. And um, it's contagious, you know, it, it makes you like, OK, I was nervous. Like I have a little bit of social anxiety, but I just broke through within the first three minutes and was, you know, <laughs> this is this is going to be an excellent week. Brilliant. Yeah. So that Brilliant. was that was huge. And then, um, yeah, when you asked me to close out the conference with my presentation, it was, um, yeah, it was an honor, you know, like I've talked about it in my presentation. I've, this is the first thing I've had in my life where I feel like I excel at something and I get, you know, attaboys and pats on my back for doing a good job. And so the experience actually gave me that experience. Um, you gave me that opportunity, you know, as cheesy as it sounds like I was in the spotlight for 45 minutes or an hour and it, it was amazing. And that's why I gave you a big shout out, you know, at the end, because you did, you have created something that's very unique and um, very well put together and organized. And it's, it's just a well-oiled machine. I mean, I tell everybody, I usually only promote two or three workshops out there. And the experience is absolutely one of them. Thank you, Jacob. I really appreciate you being there. And, and for, yeah, what you just said there, uh, it was an easy decision putting you, uh, putting you at the end. And um, I, love your, I love your presentation. Could you actually touch upon a bit about what you spoke about and give us a bit of a recap for anyone who, who wasn't there? Yeah, sure. So it was, it, it was, I wanted to make sure that my presentation I designed for the experience was impactful and it, it, there was no fluff. It kind of cut through the BS, you know, and show everyone sitting in the crowd and the teachers, people I look up to, everyone that to me, uh, the one thing I've learned is social media is great. I love creating work for my clients. I love doing all that, but I'm creating for me. So like, I don't give a if nobody here in this room even enjoys my work, <laughs> it's not, that's not what's important to me. And my presentation was just about how, how lucky I truly do feel to be able to do this for a living one. And two, how important it is to create for yourself. You know, I pulled the crowd and asked who they created for. And majority of the people that answered said their clients. I'm a firm believer of that's great. I create for my clients as well, but what do you actually get out of that? You know, are like I, I want to create art for my clients. That's what I want to provide them with, you know, because then everybody wins. It's a win-win for everyone. I get to go home and review these photos and I'm like, oh man, I can't believe I made this photo for them. That's amazing. Like, holy shit, I made that. <laughs> you know, yeah. I want that excitement. I want to impress myself. And that may sound selfish, but that's what, you know, it goes back to if I just want a job, I'll go work for someone else. You know, I won't, I have to get something out of this. Totally. And I think that's yeah. what sets you apart as well. You, you and your imagination, your creativity, the fact that you're doing all this personal work and then it feeds into your weddings and doesn't even feed into it, it really is. It is your weddings, the way you shoot it, the way you capture couples, moments. It's so creative and so different. And I think that's what makes you so so beautiful and unique in, in so many ways. And thank yeah, you. just hats off to you, man. It's, yeah, it's really, thank you so uh, much. Inspiring. And that's kind of what I learned after, especially after speaking at the experience. Um, I had a lot of people come up to me afterwards that were struggling with, you know, the whole social media game, trying to impress other photographers. And they said that my presentation helped them kind of break through that fear. 
which is the other thing I touched on. It's like fear is an illusion, right? It's something we tell ourselves. In, in actuality, the definition of fear could be anxiety. It's something we tell ourselves and we believe it is truth. And in reality, you could just go try, right? If you have this idea, like, who cares if other photographers don't like it? Like, why are you creating for them anyway? <laughs> you know, it's, it's one of those yeah. things. Some of my best friends are photographers, but they could all hate my work and it doesn't affect my mental health at all. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful, Jacob. Any favorite takeaways from, from some of the other speakers that you may have heard? in last year or uh, any favorite moments that you could share with us? Yeah, I think one of my favorite takeaways was something you set up, which was the, the interview process, the daily interviews with the speakers for that day. I just thought I found it so fascinating because we were able to learn this wasn't a scripted thing. This wasn't anything like that. It was, um, here's the host. He's going to ask you some questions and we have to answer, you know, <laughs> there was no, there was no prep for, okay, here's the six questions I'm going to ask you make sure you get through it. <laughs> there, there was nothing like that. So it was, we got to see these teachers kind of as they are raw people. Yeah. So I really love that. But then also the, the diversity of the speakers was just incredible. Like you brought on the set designer for the Revenant. And I can wholeheartedly say that the whole crowd was just awestruck by that whole presentation because it was something none of us, most of us have ever thought about, have mm -hmm. ever looked into. And I think it's really important that we draw knowledge from areas like that, that we would never even reach out to, you know? Yep. It was so inspiring to see his process and how, how talented he was. It was incredible. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I, I, uh, so just for anyone who, who's curious about that. So we have Big Ideas mini presentations each year, and there's 10 talks that are about 15 minutes long. And one of them was the art or the set director from The Revenant. His name is Hamish Purdy. That actual talk isn't online, but you can, if you search his name, and then we'll put it in the show notes, uh, you can check out um, an example of that talk that he gave at Creative Mornings in Vancouver. And uh, I heard him speak there and everything that he spoke about was so relatable to creatives and in terms of stylized shoots and preparation and the whole creative process that he shared with us was, was really beautiful. So it was a, a no brainer to get him as a local in Vancouver to come to the experience. And actually very soon we're going to release our 10 presenters that will be doing similar talks. Uh, we, we, that was quite inspiring for me generally just to see people's reaction to a, to a talk like that and to have actually less photographers and more creatives that yeah. are still applicable to photography. Absolutely. Uh, speak, speak at <clears throat> ARC. So, uh, so this year is going to be uh, more, more along that line. And I'm glad um, that was a huge takeaway for you too. Yeah. The other takeaway is more of a psychological one for me, where I, where I took away like this is an event I absolutely am going to attend every year. And because it is one of those places where I can walk in and sit down amongst everyone and like, I'm so excited to be an attendee this year. You have no idea. Like <laughs> it's going awesome. it, to, yeah, it's going to be amazing to just sit there and take it all in as an attendee. Not that I wasn't doing that as a teacher, you know, but as a teacher at a conference, you want to, you want to make sure your presentation's perfect. You add in things, you remove things and you kind of have that stuff on your brain. So this will be, mm. this is going to be an excellent experience. And yeah, of course the party night is anyone that doesn't take away something from that is just, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> have never yeah, partied no, before. Cool. Yeah. Before we go to the, before we go to the party, um, w just what you're saying about, you know, attending versus being a speaker. I think definitely there's, you know, when you're a speaker, your mindset is on the actual presentation and, and especially if you're the last speaker, then you're kind of listening to the other talks and you're engaging with all the attendees and the pressure kind of builds for, for that presentation. But at the same time, you know, you, you've had the space to really get to know the, the conference, get to know the attendees and then coming back now as an attendee. You won't have that <laughs> yeah. um, on you. And, and so you'll, uh, you'll be able to really just kind of immerse yourself in the experience. Yeah. And that's what I'd like. I, I truly can't wait to immerse myself in that, in that way. Right. Because now I feel like, you know, not that I wasn't my true self, but yeah, like you said, that, that pressure that is on my mind of like making sure I do a good job and make sure people walk away with something. I won't have that at all this year. So like I can set aside time and sit in a, in a circle with 30 other attendees if I want. It's just kind of like free range in that way, right? Like where, yeah, I, where I don't have that pressure so I can almost kind of play. <laughs> awesome. And I hope you do. I hope you do. And uh, looking forward to hanging out with you when you, when you get there. Um, so with the party, uh, you had quite, and so we, we themed the party this year. 
And last year, sorry, we themed it. It was constellations, which could literally mean anything. But uh, for me, it was just, uh, it was more about connectivity. And I'm a big fan of the stars and and I won't go into into that rabbit hole. But um, but the theme was constellations and Hugh Whitaker and Jennifer Mohair um, really just <laughs> took that theme to another level, made it, uh, well, in England, we call it fancy dress, um, I guess in North America, like uh, into a costume party. And uh, yeah. and it was, pretty, it was pretty cool to see what, what they did. They got the, the vibes really high for that. And, uh, and they took it to a, to a really amazing level. And then you took it up a notch further. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, all, it was all thanks to them. Like you said, um, yeah, totally. you're, you're all, about, all about the connectivity of things. Well, Jennifer made me connect with one of her leotards that she had brought. Um, <laughs> and I wore it backwards and my chest and belly were exposed. And it was like wearing like silver saran wrap. <laughs> <laughs> but again, it's one of those things where like I did that because I've always been like the class clown type. Right. And it's not that I do it for the attention. I want to make sure that people are having a good time. So if I can inspire people to like let loose a little bit, you know, I'll do it. Like, yeah, I was walking around with, it wasn't even skin tight. It was almost like inner organ tight. Uh, (laughs) You could probably see my kidney poking out on one of the sides, you know, it was, it was that tight. And then I, I painted stars on my nipples and um, yeah, you know, I think it's just important to allow yourself to be free for a night, you know, let it all out. (laughs) And, and yeah. And dancing and being silly are two of the greatest things to do that. You just, just go do it. Yeah, totally. I feel you, brother. We have, we're have we so lucky to be photographers, to have this life and to experience all the things that we do and to end it off with a, with a huge party with all with all like your friends and, and what some people become family. It's just a really, really awesome way to just kind of close off the three days. And thank you, Jen and Hugh, for making it so, so special. That was an amazing night that I definitely won't ever oh, forget. Yeah. And looking, yeah, looking forward to this year. The theme is Supernatural. And oh. yeah, it's closer to <laughs> Halloween this time. So should have some pretty interesting costumes and a few surprises as well. It's going to be a lot of fun. Brilliant. Yes. <laughs> oh, now I'm even more excited. Cool, brother. Up until the experience, what do the next few weeks and months look like for you? My wedding season kind of kicks off in September this year. I've, I've noticed chatting with a lot of my photographer friends here in the States, a lot of bride and grooms, as we all know, it's been hot around the world this summer and especially around us here in the States. And a a lot of clients figured out that, okay, July and August, it's just too damn hot to have weddings. So um, yeah, I've been, I've been traveling around doing a mini one day workshop for people the past few weeks, but yeah, first week in September, my wedding season kind of kicks off and then it goes through November. So I'm just really excited for that. Right. Cause it's just the opportunity to tell so many new stories and um, yeah, I just can't wait. I'm just, I'm just really excited for that. Awesome, Jacob. And so just to wrap up here, which speaker are you looking forward to hearing the most this year at the experience? Yeah, I would have to. So I met him in person last year, Joam Geddes. I followed his work for a couple of years now. And I really feel like, um, you know, you see a lot of portrait photographers out there that shoot a lot of nudes. And it's not to knock on those photographers, but a lot of it, it kind of comes off as similar, right? They just kind of create the same thing. And Joam's work is very cinematic, very storytelling. And the way he sees light is just something that I want to jump inside of his head. (laughs) And um, yeah, just listen to him and and what his process is, because I know it's not just showing up with a camera and, you know, placing the model wherever he wants that looks interesting. It's a bigger thing than that. And you can tell by his diaries project that he does. So yeah, I just, I'll, I'll probably take his masterclass because I just think it'll be really beneficial for me to, while I feel like I see the world one way, he sees it a completely different way. And I'm very inspired by film and cinema. And I think he's he's a testament to that as a photographer, that he's obviously drawn to that as well. Definitely, definitely. His his work is very cinematic and the way he, he has a certain warmth about it and the colors that he uses, I can, I, oh. I'm very drawn to it too. And it, yeah, yes. totally, uh, totally hear where you're coming from and would, love to also do that class myself one day for sure yeah and he's just a really lovely guy i just he's he's really good to be around when i met him he was just kind of a bubbly guy like i and i and i love that right because i think a lot of people when they look at our work they expect us to be a certain way and it's like no like you can create dark dark work and be the silliest person you've ever met you know it's (laughs) definitely yeah 
the side of uh, side of one's personality for sure that comes out in in photography. Awesome, Jacob. I really appreciate you sharing and taking the time out of your busy day to connect with me and the rest of our audience. And looking forward to hanging out with you and partying with you this October in Vancouver, mate. I can't wait, man. It's my pleasure to do this with you. And thanks so much for having me on. Pleasure, mate. Hey, how was that, guys? To learn more about Jacob, he can be found at www.jacobloafman.com and connect with Jacob and tell him what you thought and tell us too. As a wedding and portrait photographer myself, one of my key takeaways was I was really encouraged to do more personal work and really just for me and no one else. And why not even bring this more into my weddings on weekends? Something that I have been trying to do, but it's easy to get lost in the uh, week to week weddings and coming up with different challenges. But this is something that I definitely will bring into my next wedding on the weekend. So it's super important for Jacob to continue to push himself. And I hope for all of us creatives, I love that Jacob's motivation was also that he didn't want to just have another job. Uh, when he jumped into photography full time, he really made it so that he continues to create so that he never gets burnt out. I love that he'll try everything and shoot everything. And that's what was so inspiring for me. But how about you? What is one thing that you will action from today's episode? You can join the conversation by using the hashtag, hashtag the Arc Creative Podcast and tweet us at Arc This Is. We'd love to hear from you. Finally, thank you so much for your time and to stay connected with us here at ARC, check us out on iTunes and subscribe for more shows coming up with Catalina Jean, Joam Guedes, and I just spoke to Fer Juaristi and he'll also be joining us at the podcast. So if you're in the creative community and you know someone who'd enjoy the show, we'd love it if you could share a link with them and let us know maybe if you'd like to join the show. Again, you can tweet us at ARC This Is. Thanks again to all of you who continued to leave us reviews after our show was released just a couple of months ago. Please do continue to rate and leave a written review on iTunes and send us feedback too. They are hugely appreciated. Once again, I'm your host, Sachin Kona, and with maximum love and gratitude on your creative journey, we'll catch you next week for another episode of the ARC Creative Podcast. Hugs and high fives. <laughs>